Well, glancing at my calendar, and I actually did today, today is National Pet Fire Safety Day. Did was, you know that was, was that in thing? your calendar? Did yeah, that, it right there? That was it, yeah. <laughs> I don't have any pets, but don't worry about it. <laughs> this is what you should be considering when your pets and the best way to protect your pet during a fire. So I asked the Shelby Township Fire Department to meet us at a resident's home where we actually learned that pets can often be the cause of a fire. So this is Chelsea living here in Shelby Township with the star of the show. How long have you had Luna? Uh, about a year and a half. Okay. So have you ever thought about the whole fire safety with pets? I know we think about fire safety, but they're an added kind of layer onto things. You know, so I've thought about fire safety here in the house, but I honestly couldn't tell you how much I've really included Luna in that. I know for our sake, we have the dog door, which is nice because if something were to ever happen, they would be able to get out. But I probably do some other things that I just maybe should have shouldn't think of when it comes to pets with the fire safety. Okay, so we're gonna grab Deputy Fire Marshal Brian Warner, gonna go inside the house and see what's good and maybe what we can do better. Inside we met Luna's friends, Zoe and Charlie. And we also found one of the best things you can have for a pet if there is a fire, a dog door. Okay, so Luna just went outside, which is actually a very good demonstration because many people don't think about this. They think of convenience for a doggy door, but it's also a great thing to have during a fire. Yes, because animals will go to a safe place. I've found cats in dryer vents trying to get the fresh air from the outside, dogs hiding in suitcases. This is a perfect escape for them. They're, it's in a fence yard, so if they leave the hazard environment and go to a safe place in the fenced-in yard, then they're going to be safe. Something we don't think about in the kitchen, just the orientation of the pots and pans on the stove actually makes a difference when it comes to pets and fires? Uh, makes a difference when it comes to pets, children, and fires. Because if you have the handle out like this, the pets, we have a dog in here that's proven. She likes to jump up. They knock it off. The grease goes flying. They burn themselves. They start a fire on the kitchen. It's a gas-lit flame so that the grease will ignite quicker. The pot should be turned in, away, and also a hot mitt kept close at hand so you can control it. The pot lid should be near, so you can, if you do have a grease fire, you can put it on top of it and let it smother itself out and turn off the burner. So all of that said, you say that the number one issue is still candles being lit or just the wrong spots? Just the wrong spots. If they are lit, then pets can have the opportunity to knock them over, catch something else on fire, you know, if laundry sitting. That's why keeping a clean house burns less than a messy house. We want to make sure that we don't leave candles unattended and then curious pets knock them over, sniff them, and, or get burned by themselves. This does happen? Yes, we've had numerous fires over my career of candles getting knocked over from a cat, being curious, unattended. Where is the best place to put a candle then? Or do you go flameless? Well, it would be better to go flameless, have uh, different things for ambient light in case the power goes out. But what we don't want to do, if you light a candle, don't leave it unattended and blow it out before you go out of the room. Hi, Luna. Hi, Zoe. All right, so the things that uh, the deputy fire marshal was talking about, did any of it surprise you? So I knew with the candles that obviously you have to be careful where you light those. And I do try to not light them as often as I would like to, just because I know dog's tails. It's not always the best combination with candles. But with cooking and the pots and pans, I probably do need to be a little bit more self-conscious about where I'm putting that handle, just because I know sometimes I do leave them hanging over because it's easier to grab. But I've never thought about what would happen if I were to walk away and one of the dogs were to come over to it. Which is actually a, an interesting point, because I think many people at home, even if they have thought about the pot mm -hmm. on the stove type of thing, you think about the kids right. knocking it over, not the golden well, retriever jumping up and well, knocking but, it but, over. But, I mean, it, it, it's it, essentially the same thing, right? The attention still goes to, <laughs> th there's nobody thinking here, we got to make sure we're ahead of the game. Right. I yeah. thought you were comparing the kids and the dogs for a second. Well, which... to a point. <laughs> 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 now, I have an old vaudeville joke, one of my all-time favorites. It's about buffalo, but it could be applied here. Okay. There are two seasons, winter and July 15th. So here we are. It's summertime. Is it? It is. <laughs> <laughs>